Hey everyone, and welcome to another Kuno Reviews. Today I take a look at another classic, the game Mirror's Edge that released 12 years ago for consoles and PC. I remember when this game was announced and footage was shown that it blew people away with its gorgeous graphics and unique gameplay perspective. It was a first person free run slash parkour game where you were a so-called runner, someone who delivers packages or messages by running over the rooftops of a metropolitan city in order to stay out of the police's hands. The setting and backdrop is this gorgeous clinical futuristic city. The huge skyscrapers go on for miles and miles and what stands out are the colors that are used. The city is called the City of Glass and it shows as the colors blue and white are the most predominant, giving the overall city a very clinical and bright feeling, kind of what the luxury districts in the citadel of Mass Effect represent. But often, besides the white of the buildings and the bright blue sky, there's another color present. This mostly happens whenever you are indoors and can be a beautiful contrast to the lack of deep colors when you're outside. Heading into an office that is almost entirely green, blue or orange is such a sudden tonal shift and it works all the better for it. It's stylish, gorgeous to look at and really works well to create a unique feeling that you cannot really find in any other games. Unfortunately though, with the beautiful looks and the style of the game is kind of where the good things end for me personally. I knew that this game has a big cult following and so I wanted to find out why, but by the end I'm a little bit surprised why it has such a cult fanbase. As mentioned before, the game is entirely first person and you are basically running around rooftops and construction sites as you jump from building to building. Though this is fun at first, the free running is not entertaining enough to last throughout the entire campaign. The game works really well when you are in the flow, trying to figure out the route, seeing the next jump ahead or a platform you can use to reach a higher destination. The first handful of levels are beautifully and well designed to allow this to happen. But then at a certain point you get levels like the sewers, but later also large offices where the gameplay speed screeches to a halt and becomes quite boring and tedious sometimes. The controls of the game work, but they don't always work quite well. As from what I understand, the PC version has some control issues with the main character not being able to grab ledges or bars properly and this indeed occurred multiple times throughout the play session. Sometimes you also need to perform pretty specific movements, but the game controls are not tight enough to where you are guaranteed to pull this off. Where the game really loses me though are the really slow sections where you either need to descend or ascend a large room. There's a section like this in the sewers and a large section inside a building that is partially under construction. It kind of reminded me of Portal 2, where you enter a big room and see all sorts of things that you know you will need to complete the puzzle. And in some ways, Mirror's Edge can be seen as a puzzle game, since you need to figure out the correct route via the correct path. The problem here is that most of the time there's only one route possible, giving no reward for exploration or alternative routes. Instead of Portal 2, where I got excited when entering a new room and seeing all the possibilities, with Mirror's Edge I sighed when I knew I would be stuck here for 10 minutes or so as I would jump and climb up and up or down. Again, the best part of the game are the first two levels or so, but the feeling of the free running and gameplay wears off quite soon and then you see that there's not much depth here. Danger besides falling or missing a jump comes in the form of police that will chase you down. In the beginning you will face these police officers sometimes or they might chase you and it can be pretty fun and thrilling. But later on they send more and more and heavier equipped police after you and it becomes really really tedious. The game kinda also encourages you to avoid the police and run away from them. You die very quickly, often dying in two or three shots on normal difficulty and there is a combat system in the game, but it is absolute garbage. With the combat system you can punch, jump kick or slide kick. Even the lightest of enemies do not go down by a single two hit combo and you are more supposed to disarm them by completing a button prompt when they try to hit you with your gun. But the timing on this is very finicky and once you do get a gun, the gunplay is terrible. It's very clear that originally the game was meant as a runner game and then they needed to add some combat in order to make it more exciting. Really frustrating parts include rooms where you need to open a valve door or reach a certain pipe which you cannot do unless you take out enough guards since they will shoot you and kill you in 2-3 hits. 
the valve door also actually requires an animation that takes 10 seconds or so, and this is more than enough time for them to kill you from afar. Thus, you need to face this terrible combat system, and it really makes the game a less fun experience. Besides just the combat sections, there are also other sections where you are being chased by choppers or later in the game enemy runners who can pretty much do the every move you can. This means you have to keep moving at all times, because if you stand still for too long, you will be killed in mere moments. This really does not give you the time to take the surroundings in, and you just hope to find the next red mark jumping point to reach the next destination. If it was more open and not as linear, sections like this could be cool with you figuring out fleeing routes on the spot and creating shortcuts. And not taking in the surroundings is such a shame since again the environments are so beautiful, vivid and unique. Then finally, let's talk about the game's length. This game is notorious for being short and you can easily complete it in 2 hours or less. On your first playthrough, you will most likely be closer to 4 hours though, since there will be sections where you will struggle a bit with reaching certain points, etc. But the feeling again crept up on me that this is all started as a tech demo or just an idea that became something more than it could bear, because the story is also not very interesting. There's apparently a lot of good lore in the comics and other narrative content, but the in-game story is very forgettable. The ending is also very abrupt and, though in the end it pretends to be emotional with the main character and her sister standing over a skyscraper, it does nothing for me since the characters are very bare bones. The cutscenes themselves are also done in a very different style from the in-game engine, which makes it feel a bit cheap. If they actually had done some of these cutscenes in the in-game engine, it would have been really cool and sometimes even thrilling. But instead, it feels again rushed, or just a lack of financial aid from their publisher. The song that plays at the end, which was also the trailer song, is gorgeous though, and is probably the only other good thing besides the unique aesthetic of the game. What saves this game from being a mess is the gorgeous visuals and unique setting with the City of Glass. It's definitely worth checking out a bit just for that, but many will probably get the picture rather sooner than later, and it's no surprise to me that this game bombed so hard, but what still surprises me is how it got such a dedicated cult following. I know that followers don't like people to criticize this game, but of course in this channel it is my opinion, so if you find a lot of joy out of this game, then that is a wonderful thing. For me though, the game ends with a 6.6. .6. After many years, Mirror's Edge Catalyst was released, which did finally add an open world city. But this game bombed hard again due to a really weird release schedule and lack of PR. I did hear that Catalyst is an improvement over the original, so I might check it out someday and review it, but for now, I'm setting my gaze on different projects.